Hey, what's going on, everybody? Great to see you on this Wednesday out there, and we've got a good bit to talk about in today's video as we're eyeing another storm system to likely cross the country just in time for our Christmas, and that likely being followed up by a bit of a pattern change back towards the wintry side of things going into the new year. Uh, so I'm going to break all that down in this video for you today. Now, if you haven't already subscribed, definitely consider doing so. We're trying to get to 4,000 by the end of the year here, and we only need about one or 200 more people. So I think it's very doable. Uh, so again, definitely consider doing that if you haven't already. And of course, like the video if you like it. Uh, maybe share it with somebody that might be impacted by some of this weather on the way. And comment, let me know where you're watching from if you're new to the channel. And if you're a regular, thank you for coming back. It means the world to me. Uh, with all that said, though, let's go ahead and jump right into it on this Wednesday. Now, we're going to start off by taking a look at satellite imagery this afternoon, and uh, you'll notice we do have a pretty big-time um, upper-level low kind of spinning away here over sections of the Pacific just off the coast of California. Uh, now, that has led to a very rainy scene through much of California, uh, but this storm is slowly going to meander off to the south and eventually cut into the United States over the next couple of days. Uh, as that storm system is doing that, we've got some more energy up in here in Canada uh, that is going to kind of emerge with this over uh, parts of Colorado and the Great Plains and likely lead to a pretty big time winter storm uh, just in time for our Christmas for a lot of folks. And that same storm will eventually move east across the country, bringing impacts with it as well uh, from really coast to coast. This one will do. All right, now taking a look at our current watches, warnings, and advisories out there, you'll notice much quieter than we had just a couple days ago. Again, we had a very active weekend. Uh, luckily, though, things have calmed down, although we are still dealing with some uh, higher uh, rivers and streams over in the east coast from new england all the way down towards florida you'll see those green boxes on your map indicating flood advisories and flood warnings for some of those creeks and streams again still out of their banks now kind of zooming back out and taking a look at the west here um, also, we are seeing some watches and warnings. This mainly, again, for this low pressure that is throwing tons of moisture back into California. Uh, thanks to that, we do have winter storm warnings in the higher terrains for uh, some snow that's going to fall. And then flood watches and warnings down uh, from Southern California all the way up the coast towards San Francisco, uh, where we are likely to continue to see that rainfall over the next couple of days. We'll also mention we are seeing a little bit of precipitation, uh, likely in the form of some snow up here into Michigan. Uh, and through the UP of Michigan, parts of northern Wisconsin, <coughs> excuse me, and Minnesota as well, um, also getting in on some of that wintry action. Uh, but that should likely clear on out here relatively soon. Um, as for the next 48 hours, just taking a quick look at that, again, relatively quiet for most folks here in the east, um, as we still have this very cold weather and very strong high pressure over the region. And that's helping to uh, keep things relatively quiet. Now, again, as we go later on into this week and that storm system out west slowly begins to influence our weather east of the Rockies, we can expect some showers, I think, as early as Thursday afternoon here through sections of the southern Great Plains and even into uh, portions of Missouri and Illinois there could see some showers moving on through by this same time frame. And all that weather will continue to move off towards the east, towards the Mississippi River Valley, by the time we get into our Friday afternoon. Um, so again, I think our Wednesday today will be relatively nice. Thursday as well for most people, especially east of the Mississippi. But by the time we get into Friday and getting into Christmas weekend here, uh, that's when things kind of become a little bit more active. And I'll take a look why here uh, as we look at our vorticity map. So again, this map's going to do a good job of showing us um, kind of where we're seeing uh, spin in the atmosphere and where storms are likely forming. And uh, you'll notice this is that storm system off the coast of California. Now, this is going into Thursday afternoon. So tomorrow afternoon, uh, you'll notice this is now slid kind of south of the Bay Area, uh, closer towards Southern California. And as I move this ahead, watch how this kind of slowly works into the lower 48. And you'll also notice another piece of energy will come out of Canada. And those two will eventually combine here uh, near Denver to form quite the snowstorm. So... Uh, moving this ahead, again, there's that bowling ball of energy moving into Southern California, and at the same time, another piece of energy uh, begins to work on into the kind of uh, Washington and Oregon state area. And again, watch how these two pieces are going to eventually merge together here over the Central Plains uh, as I move this into Saturday afternoon here. 
Um, so again, this is the 23rd of December. You'll notice these pieces of energy getting closer towards each other. And by the time we hit Christmas Eve afternoon, they're all out kind of spinning around. And we have multiple different um, lobes of vorticity, if you will, here that are going to be causing multiple different areas of some spin and likely uh, areas of precipitation. Um, so by the time we get into Sunday afternoon, just in time for Christmas Eve, likely a southern piece of energy helping to bring some rain and maybe even some thunderstorms uh, down here into the southern section of the country through the Gulf. Uh, and then our other pieces of energy likely helping to bring some snow into sections of the northern Great Plains and a lot of snow as well into parts of the Rockies uh, come Christmas Eve and Christmas Day itself. Now, as we move this further ahead into time, you'll notice uh, this energy continues to swing on through and even other uh, kind of players on the field show up here. Uh, we've got multiple pieces of energy by the time we get into the couple of days after Christmas, and all of these are likely going to try uh, to work into tandem some way to continue uh, bringing a bit of a stormy threat through the East Coast. Uh, now, when I say stormy, that could mean stormy in a couple ways. It could mean actual storms in terms of severe weather. It could mean snowy weather. It could also mean just some heavy rain. Uh, but nonetheless, unsettled weather uh, for that kind of period after Christmas, and even really going into Christmas from the Rockies eastbound into the East Coast as all of this energy kind of tangles up with each other and uh, likely makes our weather a bit more interesting here going towards the end of the month and towards the start of the new year. All right, let's time this out for you in terms of uh, kind of future radar and what we're expecting. Again, a lot of rain in California over the next couple of days as this um, low pressure continues to pump that Pacific moisture towards the coastline. The good news is, though, that should clear out by the time we get into our Friday and Saturday for most folks in California and up and down the West Coast. Uh, now, again, as we go into our Saturday, that's when both pieces of energy are now kind of working into the country. The southern piece here uh, down near Colorado, or excuse me, um, near California and Arizona, and our northern piece, uh, or energy number two, up here uh, kind of towards Oregon and Washington State. Now, moving this further ahead into time, you'll notice a lot of snow breaking out in these higher terrains of the Rockies throughout the day Saturday and uh, even into Saturday evening. But it's going into Sunday, our Christmas Eve, that this turns into more of a winter storm for areas outside of those higher elevations. Uh, you'll notice on our latest European model here, look at all of this snow breaking out from uh, the Dakotas all the way down even towards the Denver metro. And unfortunately, at the same time, we're also seeing an influx of Gulf moisture likely to help bring um, the threat of some thunderstorms, maybe even a little bit of severe weather down through sections of Texas, Louisiana, and surrounding Gulf, uh, Gulf Coast states going into our Christmas Eve with rain kind of in between uh, those two uh, main factors, if you will. Now, moving this into Christmas Day itself, you'll notice uh, this piece of energy, this low pressure continuing to spin away and slowly moving across the country, likely still bringing cold air and snow on the backside while still pumping that warm Gulf air on the front side. Um, so I think during this time period, likely going to see a pretty good flux of some rain and thunderstorms through the southeastern half of the country for our Christmas day. Uh, likely a cold rain kind of here in the Ohio River Valley and then even some snow here on the backside as the storm continues to progress. Uh, now once we get past this point, once we get past Christmas day itself, this is when things kind of get a little more interesting and more pieces of energy kind of uh, try to work in tandem here, and we'll have to watch this. Uh, we could see a pretty good punch of cold air on the back side here that could maybe help create some snow there, um, but we're also seeing some signs that, again, very strong warm air on the front side could lead to a very rainy uh, couple of days after Christmas, and if I remember correctly, uh, it's kind of what we saw last year too. Uh, maybe not quite Christmas. I think it was New Year's Day and the days after that it was very rainy, uh, but you know, nonetheless, maybe a little bit of correlation there between the two. Uh, and then as we move this further ahead into time, again, this is when things kind of really go off the rails and the models are starting to get a little all over the place, but we'll watch for maybe the chance of some cold air kind of trying to change the pattern here uh, behind this big storm system going towards the new year. Uh, and that could, you know, help to really set the tone for uh, 2024. We'll see. All right. Um, one thing I do want to mention here as well is our uh, severe weather chances. Now, this map's just going to show lightning density. It's not necessarily going to show where we have um, wind shear and you know tornadoes and strong winds and things like that, but it does do a pretty good job at showing where we have instability able to create some of these thunderstorms moving ahead. 
Um, as I move this ahead, we could see some thunderstorms uh, out into sections of southern uh, California and maybe even Arizona between now going into Friday afternoon here. But it's really going into Saturday afternoon and evening that you'll notice these thunderstorm chances really begin to unfold here over southern sections of the country from uh, Texas through Oklahoma and eventually going into Christmas Eve itself further east into Louisiana and partially even into uh, Mississippi Alabama and Georgia and even parts of Florida and the Carolinas going into the day or two after Christmas and then after that things kind of calm down a little bit as again potentially some cold air works on in and limits that instability in the atmosphere. All right, taking a look at temperatures and the temperature anomaly now through about Christmas and then we'll zoom out and take a look at the long range pattern here as well. Uh, you'll notice here very warm temperatures are have already overspread much of the country outside of the immediate east. That will change going into Christmas as this warm air takes over just about everywhere. This is Christmas Eve afternoon uh, and you'll notice very high areas of above average uh, temperatures through much of the central part of the country from Minnesota down towards Iowa, Kansas into Texas and really the entire east coast. Uh, everywhere east of the Rockies really is above average for what we should be this time of year going into our Christmas. And that's why uh, if you watched yesterday's video, I talked about this. The chances of white Christmas east of the Rockies are very slim outside of sections of the plains where again we'll have that snowstorm move on through. And that warm weather looks to continue uh, into the days following Christmas before eventually there are some signs, maybe some cooler weather tries to once again work back into the picture going towards the new year. Alrighty, let's take a look at some potential snow totals out of this snowstorm out here into the plains. And uh, you'll notice this is now through Christmas afternoon. Likely anything you see on this map will be on the ground come Christmas morning. So I think this is a pretty good indication of uh, where we have the best shot at seeing a white Christmas. Definitely into these higher terrains of Colorado. Absolutely book it. You're going to have a white Christmas with likely um, still feet of snow on the ground in those extremely higher elevations from all the snow we've already gotten this winter. Uh, but we'll definitely add some to it here with this snowstorm. Now for areas further south here into sections of western Kansas and uh, southern Nebraska, not out of the question. You could wake up with a dusting to an inch or two on the ground come Christmas morning. I think that's a very real possibility, but it's going further north of here into the northern plains that we have a much higher chance of seeing that snow stay on the ground and uh, bringing that white Christmas again through much of southern or excuse me, South Dakota, I almost said Southern Dakota as if the Dakotas were one state there, uh, but through much of South Dakota and Nebraska, likely one to three inches um, like, um, you know, could fall out of this storm system between uh, the 23rd and through the 25th uh, as that snow continues to kind of crank up on the back side of this storm system. Now, as for rainfall totals, um, unfortunately, I know you'd probably rather be talking about snow for a lot of folks, but rain is going to be something we're measuring more than snow uh, for a lot of people come this Christmas. And you'll notice here um, a pretty good area of some heavy rainfall here through the southern states, through the Gulf uh, states, as um, again, we get that influx of some of that warm advection and moist advection out of the Gulf as the storm system helps to, again, pull very strong winds out of the south here, going to cause some rainy conditions here through the southern tier of the country, but even kind of in between here through the Ohio River Valley uh, and other areas are likely going to see rain throughout the next week, especially from that 24th through the 27th time period. And also, I will mention here, if you're watching in California, uh, yep, a lot of rain for you as well, especially in Southern California over the next couple of days where we could even be uh, dealing with some flooding there uh, for some folks. So definitely make sure you're watching out for that as well. All right, let's zoom things out a little bit here and talk about uh, the overall pattern going into 2024 to start off the year and uh, who could be seeing some wintry weather and uh, if we're going to get a, you know, kind of flip back towards a cooler and moister pattern. So again, right now, um, this is that storm system we've been talking about. This is going to move into California. You'll notice this kind of area on your map here. Uh, that is that troughing that we're seeing with that current storm system. Uh, while that's ongoing, again, very warm temperatures out in the east as we have that very strong ridging and that strong southerly flow ahead of the storm system. Uh, we just got done discussing that, but as we move this ahead uh, further into time, you'll notice um, these blues on your map, which again, really just kind of signal stormy weather more than anything, um, kind of continue to crank up through the southern tier of the country and going towards the last couple of days of the year, we've got a very strong signal for some sort of storm. Uh, near the southeastern United States. Uh, and again, these are the last couple days of December here. 
As I move this further ahead though, that same storm signal kind of continues into the start of January and we've got a very pronounced southern jet here. Uh, this is very important if you're a winter weather fan in the eastern half of the country. Uh, we need a southern storm track here to help kind of allow some of that cold air in and allow some of that moisture to overlap with that cold air. It's very important um, to getting winter weather in the southern half of the country and through the eastern half. And our models indicate we'll have the storm track here, I think, really going from Christmas through at least the first week of January. The big question is, though, are we going to get any kind of cold air to help link up with that and kind of come down out of Canada? Um, I'll mention, I don't think uh, right now that there's a big sign of any kind of cold air outbreaks, but uh, do notice we are seeing some stronger ridging here in the uh, west, which is going to allow some troughing in the east and potentially with that some colder air trying to move on down and connect up with that southern storm track. Not out of the question by any means. I will mention though, I think right now looking at this, if there's somebody that I think is in the best position to kind of see some snow here around the new year, it's going to be kind of in this middle part of the country. I think that's where we're going to have the best alignment of uh, some of this, you know, uh, storm track to the south bringing precipitation and just enough cold air to the north to kind of supply it. If you're kind of watching from further south here into the deep south, I think this is a good start. Um, definitely, it's good to have the southern storm track. I think the best shot for snow there, though, will be a little later in January. Um, we'll definitely have to watch that. But I kind of like this sweet spot, this Goldilocks zone in the middle here uh, for maybe some snow between um, the start of the new year and through that first week or so of January. And now, as we look at temperatures in the same time period, again, uh, this is Christmas Day itself. You'll notice a very warm Christmas uh, for really everyone in North America. If you're watching in the United States and you're kind of bummed out about this, uh, well, it's all of Canada, too, that's really kind of torching, if you will, uh, bringing these very above average temperatures. But as we move this ahead and that southern storm track kind of begins to grain, uh, gain ground, you'll notice these bluer colors work back in to the southern half of the country. And we've got below average temperatures as well as above average precipitation here going again into that first week of January. So not out of the question that maybe we get some sort of wintry system uh, to start the new year. Very possible, I think, for a lot of folks here in the east, and we'll continue to monitor those trends here throughout the next couple of weeks. All right, so just to kind of review here, again, we've got this storm system coming out of California, that likely to cause some problems uh, now through about Christmas and even the days after Christmas before um, that same storm system could be a bit of a trendsetter and uh, set up shop for a bit of a cooler and wetter start to 2024. And me personally, I'll be rooting for that. I'm excited for a good snowstorm. Um, so I'm sure a lot of you are as well. And uh, hopefully we can kind of line those two pieces of energy with that cold air to the north and that um, active southern jet stream. And hopefully, again, we'll get some kind of winter weather event through the east coast to track in 2024. And honestly, my belief is we'll get at least a couple to track before the winter is over. And we once again go right back to tracking severe weather, which it feels like we've been doing already all winter anyway. Um, anyway, though, again, hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, definitely consider subscribing. Like the video if you like it. And as I said earlier, of course, comment. Let me know where you are watching from. With that said, I hope you have a great rest of your Wednesday out there. And I'll see you all tomorrow.